Greetings, dear ones. I'm Cryon of Magnetic Service. My partner steps fully away, and he doesn't know what's coming. But what he feels is it's always, always filled with the benevolent love of God. If you wanted to sum up the cryon messages of the past, of the future, of now, it's a circle of love. I come to you from the other side of the veil and it's a mystery what it is, where it is, how it is. I've told you I've never been human. I speak through a human being as all channelers do. And that's because the human is the only one who can carry these messages for humans. This tonight is also filled with love and it's a plea, a plea to see things in a bigger way. A plea for spiritual logic and we use the term all the time. Dear ones, it's going to be a lot more difficult to see the circle of beauty, the unending circle of love, if you stay in the kind of singularity in history that you're in at the moment. The shift is going to create paradigms of new thinking. And these paradigms of new thinking spiritually will not be an end to religion. It will be an enhancement of the truth of all of it. The systems that are here, we have said before, don't have to leave for humanity to come to a place where it doesn't have war. All of the major spiritual systems of the planet teach love. We don't speak of the, the fundamentals, the ones who have gone astray from the, from the central message. We talk about the central message. And I tell you that it's not going to be that difficult for them to have a tolerance for one another eventually because the goals are the same. But what has to change is the perspective of who and what God is, of the ancientness of the galaxy, of the universe in comparison to the earth. And to look at this earth as it is, not like it used to be thought of. God is bigger than all of it. That which you call the creative source and you acknowledge is God is also part of you, the human being. And because of that, we can speak like we speak. Because your very soul, if you want to call it that, is a part of the other side of the veil that I speak from now. Hard to conceive that the creative source has no beginning and no end. In itself it is a circle. Time does not exist. When you see something is ancient, if it's in a circle that means it's coming up again. It's not a time like you think that would repeat itself, but it, it is a time that always is in the now. It always is. You keep track of it. We don't. If something always is, then there is no past. If something always is, there's nothing coming up. It simply is. And yet your singleness 
all that you have had in the history of your your discovery of what earth is about should tell you about God and it doesn't and it hasn't this is a plea for common sense dear ones in history you discover things you dig up things you start to marvel at the ancients only recently we gave you information that there was history before history and you're starting to discover that and you marvel again at the ingenuity perhaps even of the technicalities of ancient civilizations you've never been told about but there's always a common question and it's all over even today and it's a mystery but it isn't it's only a mystery because of your single your single mindedness when it comes to time have you noticed around the planet that the same symbols exist <laughs> and that brings up an argument where did they come from how can the ancients in different lands in different times have the same symbols and that which humans then come up with is really unique <laughs> for because of the singularity that you expect when it comes to evolution and development and creation you are then arguing about where did life start and wherever it started then you say and this is proof that then it carried it to this place and then it carried it to someplace else and then it carried it over here how else could most of the planet have these symbols and the anthropologists then argue well that means that that this race really had to start over here because that symbol now was found over here before that race began do you see where this is going and so the arguments are say who had it first and then distributed it to the earth and you will say because this race over here on this continent had a symbol therefore there had to be a bridge that connected it so that the race before them could cross the bridge and give them the symbol nowhere in your thinking is the truth the creation story dear ones was not singular you have the garden of eden which represents the earth you have adam and eve representing the gender of male and female everywhere on the earth you have the angelic presence who is giving the male and the female the truth of light and dark high and low awareness or non-awareness everywhere not just one little garden someplace how singular when the Pleiadians came they brought a beautiful countenance of seeding this earth the Pleiadians represent almost an angelic energy dear ones that's what you get with a million years of involvement you have planets going into graduation and and those who are former humans like you coming into realization of control of physics of being close to their higher self of getting to a point where you can't even tell the corporeal from the spiritual of being able to move from place to place without their bodies and living for very long periods of time centuries you find that too far-fetched you've only been here a little while in your enlightened state your babes and you have a singularity that says everything happened from a single point well it didn't it happened all at once all over this planet and dear ones the symbols that you see all over this planet are Pleiadian because those were the parents those are the ones who came in love to give you this information to seed the planet and it was everywhere
And you try so hard to prove who was first and from what point source it came, not even thinking for a moment it could have been all at once. You'll find it everywhere. You're going to find it now. Doesn't matter what you'll find in the future, you're going to find it there. You're going to dig down and find things 20, 30,000 years old, and it's going to be there. A conundrum. For anthropologists, it won't be solved with a single point source. It's beautiful. We told you that the only real exception was Lemuria because it was surrounded by water. A small continent before it sank to the Hawaiian Islands that are there today, the highest mountain on the earth was pushed up by the hot spot that was under it geologically not only sound thinking but it's happened in other places on the planet but it was surrounded by water there was no influence for thousands of years therefore it always remained pure and those who left from Lemuria and founded the other places we have spoken of that the ancients also claim such as New Zealand Easter Island and others got purity because there was no influence. It was surrounded by water. A pressure cooker of sameness, you might say, where the teachings remained what they should have been and not what humans created. And so there were special places in this creation story over the last 50,000 years. But it happened all at once. You have this singular thinking, the point source thinking, the, the planetary way of thinking you are the only one. And if you're the only one, therefore God belongs to you. Let me present something to you. Let's go back in time. It wasn't that long ago that earth was considered to be the center of everything. And if you will read your history books and you will talk to those who are not only scientific but spiritual, you'll see it. The books contain that which they believed. And why not? Because as you look at the sky, everything goes around the earth. <laughs> The sun goes around the earth, the moon goes around, the stars go around. It's a perspective of standing on the earth, looking out at what's moving. And so it was common for everyone to say, therefore, the earth is at the center of everything. In fact, it goes so far as to say, because the the universe itself, the galaxy, all the stars seemed to go around the earth. The earth had to be the center of the universe. It's not that far-fetched. If you don't know any better, and you don't know how things presume to be relative to other things, then it makes sense. Everything seems to revolve around you. And then it changed. When the telescopes became better, when the mathematics became better, when the human beings started to realize something else in physics, you realized it wasn't that way at all. It just looked like it. The first time the proposition was made that the Earth actually goes around the sun, the biggest objection came from the spiritual believers. And they said, no, that can't be so. God made us the center. We are the center. Look around, we're the center. Therefore, the astronomers were, of course, quickly jailed. <laughs> they had to be wrong. And then the later you find out they were not. Then you found out that the sun actually is part of a, another system called the solar system. It explained why some of the planets, 
the larger blobs of light in the sky had erratic movements. They didn't necessarily go around the earth. They came and they went. They bobbed a little. And that's because they also went around the sun. So it was perception. Other things were going around the sun. And yet spiritually, even though there was proof otherwise, you were still the center of everything. Pretty soon you realized that the solar system was also going around something bigger. Pretty soon you realized there were billions of solar systems. And they were all going around the middle of something else. And that something else you called a galaxy eventually became a billion galaxies. Earth was like one piece of sand on a million beaches. And those million beaches all had parents that went around them of a million more. And yet, with that knowledge and the beauty and the elegance of where you belong in the cosmos, there are still, to this day, those who say, but the center is here. Dear ones, it isn't. The creative center of the universe is not a center at all. It's in what you call the void. A place you would never understand that is bigger than all the multiverses combined. The circle we speak of is a circle of love. It is about creation and the source of creation and the beauty and the elegance of the soul that you contain in you. Everything physical is temporary. Everything you think is magnificent and very, very old will go away. And you will never go away. You're older than old and newer than new. The beauty of this should ring in the truth of my words. And yet, dear ones, there are those who say, but we are the center. <laughs> I'd like to ask certain spiritual organizations, do you really think you're alone in the galaxy? You're the new kid on the block. That means there are civilizations that are millions of years older than you are before you ever became human. And I want to ask you something. Do you think they knew your prophet? And the answer is no. Your prophet came a lot later. Is your prophet only for the world or is it universal? These are questions that will fly in the face of doctrine. There is a universal truth that goes beyond prophets and humans and ancients. And the universal truth is that God is inside of all humans equally. And that the system does not revolve around the earth. The system is for all creatures. And there are many. Dear ones, we've told you about the Pleiadians who are your spiritual parents. They still are here. They still exist as galaxies filled with them. They are not ETs. They're your spiritual parents. They had spiritual parents of their own. Millions of years before that, they had spiritual parents of their own. This galaxy has been here for billions of years. The Earth is not the center. And the reason you think it is, is because you feel the love as though it is. Because when you come into awareness, you feel you're, you're everything. Because you are to God. This is a plea for sanity of purpose. For seeing God as enormous and not just earthwide. For seeing some of the doctrines as perhaps those that belonged when you thought the earth went around nothing. 
and everything went around you, well, it doesn't. It's so different than you think. When you take a look at the galaxy and all that is there and the other galaxies around you and you see the magnificence of creation, doesn't that tell you how big God is? Bigger than any human, than any prophet. A love that surpasses any kind of rules you might have been told of. A God that does not then judge a human being and then send them to some kind of punishment because earthwise they didn't do something well on earth. Do you see what I'm saying? God is bigger than the planet earth and so are you. Now, did you ever wonder since you're older than old, <laughs> where were you before earth? We've said it before, dear ones. Let's use some spiritual logic. What does a soul do? Does it only come to earth and then go home to roll around heaven all day? Before you got here, what were you doing? What was the purpose? Who were you then before humanity? Your soul always was and always will be. It is part of the creative source. Can't you feel the beauty of it? We've told you at the, at the moment of death, there's a return to the group. We told you there's a, a three-day return. We told you that most of the spiritual systems on the planet claim the three days because it's real. Three days of recalibration where you start to hear the music again where you start to turn into the light that you are and that you return to that creative source which is home. This is not home. This is work. <laughs> what did you do before you got here? You want to talk about a bigger picture. I'll tell you what you did. You did what you do here. And you did it in other places with other shapes, always humanoid. Dear ones, the physics of biology is the same because the principles of the physics are the same everywhere in this galaxy. Why do you expect it then to create such odd, horrible things? It's the same. Gravity is different. The heat and the cold is different. But that's about it. You'll have taller human, shorter human. But dear ones, humanoid is who you are and who you always have been. If you want to know who the, who, who, what the, an Orion looks like, an Arcturian looks like, looks like you. It's not odd or strange for physics is physics and biology is biology and it works the same everywhere. DNA is DNA and it works the same everywhere. When you finally find life, even if it's microbial, it'll have DNA. Will that shock you? And we've said it before, any more than a child sits on a beach and they look at the beach and they say, this is wonderful, but I only see one beach, therefore this is the only beach on earth. But when they find other beaches, they'll say, they look just like my beach. What a shock. It's the same thing. What did you do before you got here? There have been other places, not called Earth, that went through this shift you're going through right now. Some of you, some of you, have an interplanetary akash, and you know what I'm telling you is absolutely true. Some of you still feel it and know it, and you're not here. Things look different, and you're not here. Most of you don't have that. It is not contained in the cave of creation for you, but it is in your soul, and you feel that. Not all of you, but some of you do. Older than old, you have participated in this system all through the time of this galaxy. Oh, 
But what about before that? Crying, were there universes before this one was created? And the answer is, of course. How do you think this one got created? There are multiverses, and one creates the other through a system that science is only just now starting to see. It's a multi-dimensional system where one creates another. It's part of the creation story of physics. It explains what you call the Big Bang, which was not a Big Bang at all. It was a change of dimensional status through membranes you haven't seen yet. There are many universes. What was the original universe? That's funny. There was no original, you see. It always was. You have a hard time with that one too. If it always was, were you there? And what were you doing? Dear ones, the soul of the human being is tasked to do what you do. You have done it for eons, and you've done it well. Here you are again, doing the same thing, and you think the earth is the center? <laughs> oh no. Someday, on your timeline a long time from now, this earth has the potential and the ripples are there to go into what I'll call ascension status where you have control over physics and your higher self starts to vibrate at the same rate as your biology. You become almost angelic at that stage. There is no more problems with population growth or what you're going to eat. It all transmutes to something else. Beautiful. I could say it's the essence of light and love and you wouldn't understand. Because it's beyond your understanding because you're still in survival mode in what I will call a savage state of earth. You've just crossed a marker that will later become something else. The potentials of the snowball rolling down the hill toward ascension status are firmly in place. And you are now in transit. Consciousness is starting to increase slowly. Generation after generation will start to see this. And this is what we teach because we've seen it before. But dear ones, when it's complete, you will then go to another place and carefully select another Garden of Eden and seed another world with the beauty of the love of God. It's a system that never has stopped. And you're right in the middle of the transitions toward it. And you still think that the center is here. <laughs> There'll be some of you who understand this message and will expand your thinking to include trillions and trillions of souls that know who you are. Think about it. You're part of it forever. I am crying in love with humanity. And so it is. <laughs>